Today, I'd like to talk to you about something I'm planning on calling whip archiving. If that piques your interest, get cozy and let's dive in. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Wool Needles Hands Midweek Ramble. My name is Taylor and I will be your host. Today, I wanna to share with you guys a concept I've been mulling over in my mind for the last several weeks now as I set about on a journey to declutter my mental space. And in also doing that, I plan on decluttering parts of my physical space as well. However, I am proud of the fact that I tend to do that naturally. I am somebody who is rather minimal in terms of the things I like to keep around and so decluttering always comes pretty easily to me in terms of my physical space. However, when it comes to the mental space um, and my capacity, you know, up here in the noggin, sometimes it's hard for me to declutter and all of that clutter tends to weigh on me, making me anxious and having it be harder for me to set about the things I really want to do because I have to wade and muck through all of the clutter going on up in my mind. And I feel like this is something that a lot of folks, especially entrepreneurs or people who work from home or people who work, if you're human, honestly, this can be an issue. And so I've done a lot of things lately to kind of help offload some of those things that we tend to store in our minds and in our brains, hoping that we remember. And in that process, I've learned about, well, I've discovered the importance of the concept of archiving. Um, now, this is something where you take, if, if we're talking about digital files, you take a file and you put it into a place where it is no longer in the front of, like on the front burner, if you will, but it's stored someplace safely that's relatively easy to access. It's just no longer front of mind. It's not in your face bringing you tension or causing any kind of friction. It's out of the way, but it's not completely lost. So it's not deleted, if you will. This is something that when it came to archiving things like archiving emails or archiving documents in the past, I was always kind of keeping it at arm's length because I didn't know what that meant and how that would help me. But as I've kind of embarked on this journey of decluttering my digital space and helping declutter my mental space, archiving has become pretty important, especially when it comes to my email inbox. But today's video, I wanted to think about how I can take this same concept of archiving things to remove them from the Im immediate visual space with my works in progress. This is not the same thing as a frog or finish activity. Now there are lots of videos here on YouTube in the knitting niche and I've made one myself about a year and a half ago where a knitter will tell you what they have on their needles and they're going to decide whether they're going to frog it or finish it. This isn't that and in fact this is kind of an anti that, if you will. This is not requiring that you make a decision one way or the other. This is freeing you to just archive this and come back to it later. Table the whip, come back to it later, but remove it for now from your immediate physical visual line of sight, your physical space, and then also, you know, your mental space as well. So we're not really asking the question today, and at least in the last couple of days when I've been actively doing this, I haven't asked myself the question too seriously, am I going to frog this or am I going to finish it? I am simply archiving the works in progress that I am not actively working on. However, keeping that idea of frogging it or finishing it in the back of your mind will be important if you run into a work in progress that you just know you're never going to finish. There's no point in storing something you know you're never going to finish. And if going through this process causes you to realize you're never going to finish that, then yes, take the opportunity to frog it. By all means, there's no point in keeping it. But today's act, this particular concept is here for us when we're not exactly sure and we really aren't ready to dedicate the time to think about it. We, we just are somewhere in the middle, we're on the fence, so we will be archiving that whip. I wanna mention here, having a small number of whips is not for everybody, having a large number of whips is not for everybody, and what I lay out for you here in terms of this method or this concept may not be for you, you might have ways that you would do it differently, and that's fantastic. This is just one way that I'm playing with right now, and I wanna share it with you, and if it works for you, great. If it doesn't work for you, that's also fine. Take with take all of this and take only the things that you can use and leave everything else 
behind. Now, all of that being said, how this is done and how effective this is was really going to kind of depend on a person's physical spatial budget, meaning how much room they have to store whips away, and also how many works in progress they actually have going at any one time. Now, if you have an abundant number of works in progress, then it really may be important to weed through some of those and frog the ones you know you're not going to finish. You have to be realistic with yourself in terms of how much you have on the needles and how much time you have in a day to determine if these are going to be things you are actually going to finish. Finish. I would recommend if you are going to go about this um, whip archival journey with the format that I'm sharing with you here today, I would start with no more than 10 whips, ideally six or seven. But if you have 10, great. Any more than 10, you definitely need to pare that down and weed out the ones that you just know realistically you're not going to finish or that no longer, like Marie Kondo says, sparks joy. Essentially what we're doing here is taking stock of what we have on our needles, documenting it in a clear and visual digital format and storing it away somewhere digitally in a place that is easy to access in the future when it comes time to dive back into those archived works in progress. So if this sounds like something that might interest you, stick around because I think you might be able to take something away from this. And I also am providing you with something that you can use on your whip archiving journey. And it's linked down below in the description box, but stick around so you can understand and get an idea of how you can use that to your benefit. Now, the first step to all of this is to figure out what it is that you actually have on the needles right now. And even before you weed anything out, I mean, you're going to need to pull everything out. Now I mentioned to you, you need to keep this at 10 whips or less. So this is an opportunity if you have more than 10 active whips to put it all out in front of you and be super realistic with yourself. Find a bright, well-lit space that is uncluttered and open where you can really sit down with your whips and see everything in front of you. It may even be important to take a photo of the entire heaping pile of whips if that happens to be you or if you're like, me in this current situation, I only have five or six whips going at one time, put them, arrange them on the floor and take an overhead shot of all of those whips. Just document where you were when you started your archiving journey. Sometimes having them all sitting in front of you will cause an instant sort of perspective shift or realization of your priorities. You'll look down and find works in progress you haven't thought about in ages or ones that you've been wanting to get back into. And it's all going to give you the perspective that you need to move forward efficiently, especially when it comes to those whips that you see and know in your heart, realistically, I'm never going to finish that. And that's the perfect opportunity to put that one off to the side for after this whole thing is finished to rip it out and store that yarn away for a future project as well as whatever project bag or needles you happen to be using with that project. Now, once everything is out and you can see everything you have, let's re-prepare the space that you're in because now it is time to take clear images of your works in progress out of their bags, laid out in their current state in whatever stage they are in. You're going to lay them out on a background in natural indirect light, something um, the background of whatever you're taking photos against should be a light color or a color that contrasts whatever it is that you have as a work in progress. And it's very important to take these photos in indirect natural light. Don't use artificial light. Don't do this at night. Do this in a well-lit room of your home around, I don't know, midday would be ideal because you shouldn't have any light slanting in through your windows. You want really nice indirect light so that you can see the true colors of your project. Don't feel tempted to take that outside in direct sunlight. That's not going to help. You can take it outside in indirect sunlight, like shade, and that's fine. But ideally in your home where you're comfortable in a well-lit room against a contrasting background and take an overhead shot to start with something looking straight down like a flat lay photograph so you can see the entire project in the frame. And then once you've done that, you can get a little closer to the project, get some detail shots. Don't go crazy with the number of photos. Now you can always delete the ones you don't want in the end, but ultimately plan on keeping three photos of each of your whips. 
So get in there, get some good photos so you can clearly see what exactly this whip looks like in its current state. Now, once you have the photos of your work in progress, what's really important here is that you identify the location of the actual pattern and make sure you've taken note of where you are in the pattern. There have been several occasions where I've pulled a work in progress out and I've looked at the pattern only to realize I did not know where I was and I couldn't be very sure by looking at you know, the project itself. Now, a really good place to do this is the app called Knit Companion. This is not a sponsored video by any means. However, I use Knit Companion religiously. It's where I store almost all of my knitting patterns, unless there happens to be a particular knitting pattern where I need a physical copy in front of me. This is where I store all of my knitting patterns. You can add notes here. It has stitch or uh, row counters, all kinds of tools to help you organize where you are in your pattern. So this is a great way to organize it digitally if that's for you. However, if you do like to be a paper pencil type and you want a physical pattern, just make sure you've noted where you are in the pattern and make sure that that pattern is printed out and with the project it matches. Once I have my whips laid out, I've taken the photos of each of the whips, I have the patterns for each, whether the physical copy or a stored copy in a digital storage you know, platform, whether it is Knit Companion or Google Drive or Dropbox or what have you. Once I have all of that, what I wanna do at this point, this is completely optional, it's completely up to you, but this is what I would like to do. I wanna take all of those whips out of the project bags where they were being kept so that I can store those project bags away out of the way, tuck them away, maybe down the road I decide I wanna have a D stash of project bags, but take the work in progress out of the project bag that it is in so you can nice and neatly store those project bags away and transfer the work in progress into a nondescript bag that can be labeled. Again, this is completely up to you. You can keep it in the project bag that it's in, but the only reason that I tell you not to do that is because you've invested a good amount of money in those project bags if you tend to be someone who likes to use project bags and you want this to be available to you if and when you decide to start something new. Now, this doesn't mean that you can't start something new. This doesn't mean that you're not going to cast on to something fresh down the road. And if that happens, you might want to have a different project bag to use for that project. And then maybe you'll reevaluate your whips at that point as well and add some more to your archive. However, it's nice to have your project bags stowed away in a place where they can be accessed and not hidden away. You're not archiving your project bag, you're archiving your work in progress. So for me, I wanted to take those works in progress out of those project bags and I used mesh produce bags to store the projects. I put little protectors on the tips of the needles so they wouldn't come poking out of the holes of the mesh uh, produce bags. I put them into the mesh produce bags and then this one's really important. I labeled each bag. I simply created little cardstock cards, wrote the name of the project on the card, and I safety pinned it to the mesh bag. So here is one that I have. It's a mesh produce bag, as you can see, and it's got a very simple label with a pin holding it to the bag. And my project is right inside. And this is a whip that is ready to be archived. I just feel looking at this, it looks like it is no longer active. It is being stored somewhere. It is labeled. It is ready to be archived. If it's in a project bag like this, it makes me think that this is an active project. I should be working on this, all of that. Not so with this. This is a project that I have accepted and embraced the notion that it is no longer active. I'm not frogging it, not as far as I know. I'm not deleting it from existence. I'm storing it away. I'm taking note of it digitally in a way that I can save that information and I'm archiving it for a later decision or even just to come back to it later to actually complete it, which is really the beauty of this. And hopefully it's, it, that's the desired outcome, right? So this is what one of my archived projects looks like. Now, once I've gone through all of my works in progress, I'm going to realize that I can either choose to archive everything that I have going and then I'm left with nothing that is active. Or of course, I can hold on to one or two projects that are my active projects. This is where you really have to be realistic with yourself. And I know that there's a lot of us out there that we like to have one big project and one little project, or maybe we like to have a garment and a pair of socks or a garment and accessories, or maybe we're the type where we want to have a garment, a blanket and accessories. 
you have to decide realistically what you're able to do efficiently. And I don't mean fast, I mean efficiently in a way that makes you feel like you're making progress, it makes you feel good about what you're working on and in a way that can actually be completed. For me, honestly, if I'm being very realistic with myself, that is no more than two projects. I like to have a larger project or a garment and I like to have a smaller project or an accessory like socks or in the case of this particular work in progress that I am keeping active, that hood that I want to work on. So I'm in the process of, I'm, I'm working on the KT Cal over on Patreon where we're knitting a um, improvised top-down raglan sweater. There's a whole story going on with that and I'll talk more about it on the po uh, podcast, but that is an active work in progress going. And then this one, which I have not worked on since I started the other is my other active work in progress. I want to finish this um, and I want to finish my knit along project as well. If I add any more projects on top of that, I will have a hard time devoting the time I need to my projects to finish them. So this is one of the works in progress that I have kept out that I will not be archiving because I want to finish this as well as the larger item. Um, that I'm knitting for the Karen Templar knit along, which watch previous episodes of the podcast and the one upcoming on Sunday to learn more about that. So look through those whips and before you archive all of them, pull the one out or the two out that you would like to work on and be realistic with yourself in terms of how many you can have going at any one time efficiently. And it's nice because you can take comfort knowing that these aren't the that you're not going to be frogging these other ones you're not deleting them from existence you're putting them away to clear up some of that mental space some of that visual space for the other things for right now offloading those other things from your mind so you can really focus your attention on these things archiving it's truly beautiful okay now all of this is well and good However, you have to have a way to remember that these whips exist because out of sight, out of mind is, is, is real. Okay. When you put something away out of sight, you are going to forget about it. And that is kind of what we want here to an extent, but we don't want to completely forget about it altogether. So we have to have a place um, where we are storing digitally the information about these works in progress, and then a place where we are storing that document in our digital space to remind us that, hey, these are here for you when you're ready to come back to them. And that could be something like a Google Doc. That could be something like a desktop folder on your computer that just says whip archive because that suggests to you, hey, this is an archive. There's nothing here pressing. You don't have to double click on this folder and open it up. It's when you are ready. Or if you are done with your current active whips and you need something else to work on and you don't wanna cast on something new because you're trying to whittle down your whip archive, you open it up, you see what you have, you take note of where you stored that particular work in progress, you access it, take it out, it now becomes a new active whip and you can remove it from the whip archive. So you don't want this to completely be 100% out of sight. It's nice for it to be somewhat, if not completely out of sight in your physical space. But when it comes to your digital space, you want that there to access so that you can click on it when you're ready to come back to it see what you have going and then make adjustments. Now, all of that in mind, what I would like to share with you and provide to you is a document that I have created using the platform Canva. I have a Canva Pro account because I use it for everything here on Wool Needles Hands. I use it for my business. I use it all the time. You do not have to have a pro account for Canva. You can have a free account for Canva if you would like to create a document like this using Canva. Again, I'm not sponsored, I just use this. And so that's what I'm using today. I am providing you with a link down below in the description box that gives you access to the template I am sharing with you here today. Meaning that if you click on that link and you have a Canva account, you will have access to the template that you can plug all of your information into just as it is, or you can 
tweak the template and change it and make it your own however you see fit. If you don't have a Canva account, you can create a free Canva account. I highly recommend it if you don't have it. For those of you who have no interest in Canva, I have also provided a link down below to a PDF version of this. Now you won't be able to make any adjustments and you won't be able to insert any information there. So that PDF copy will be simply for those who want to print it out and put in the information by hand, maybe glue down some photos things like that. So if you do have Canva or if you're interested in Canva, it's really honestly a fantastic platform for creating documents to organize different things in a way that's creative. Um, and that would be how you will be able to access this template. However, you can create your own template using something like Google Docs or a spreadsheet or Microsoft Word, any kind of a Word document platform you can use to create something like what I am creating here today. So let's go ahead and dive in. I am going to open up my computer and I'm going to share with you my process for creating my WIP archive document using my photos and the information I have on my current works in progress. So let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, so here we are, I have Canva open and you can see in front of you a document that I am calling Project Archive. Now, I didn't call it Knitting Project Archive or Whip Archive, I just called it Project Archive because if you have some other craft that you happen to be involved in or there's some other kind of project, this can um, be used for that. And in fact, I think the only thing that makes it hard to transfer this across the crafts would be where it says yarn and needles. But if you are using Canva, Canva, everything that you see here um, can be changed. Okay. If you're going to open up Canva and work on this as a template, you will be able to change and tweak everything that you see here. But this is my project archive. I love the way it looks. It looks fantastic. It's very minimal because I don't want there to be a lot of friction when it comes to using this. It needs to be relatively quick and streamlined and easy. And you don't want to have a lot of extra space. I didn't want to have really big note sections because the more we have to write about a particular thing or the more we feel that you know compelled to write about a particular thing, the more friction we're creating and the less likely we are to use that particular tool, right? So I want this to be pretty streamlined. So here we go. We have the project archive. Each page of the project archive has a section for two projects. So I'm going to zoom in here. This is one project here. You can see the three photo frames, a project rating, and then there's another one right below that. So each page has a, a place for two projects and this link will provide you with a template for six projects. If you wanted to add or duplicate one of these pages because you have more than six projects and you're using Canva up here above the project, there's this little spot right here that says duplicate page. If I click on that, it automatically du duplicates the page and everything is there just the way it is in the initial page. And you just can duplicate it as many times as you need. But remember, try not to archive any more than 10 projects. Let's just keep it to 10 or fewer. Now, this is a fun thing to just kind of go on using a template like this when it comes to getting familiar with Canva. This is a great way to learn how to use Canva because you can click on things and plug and play and go over here and play with everything on the side and figure out what works for you. This is not a tutorial for Canva. I'm going to use this and I'm not going to give you a tutorial for everything that I'm doing here. Um, but I'll give you the basics so that you can complete this particular document if you're using Canva. But when it comes to all the other features of Canva, that's something you really want to play with because it is spectacular. Okay, so here's my project archive and I have one, two, three, four projects that I am ready to archive. So I have sweater number 18, a pair of vanilla socks. Let's see, what do I have right over on this side? So sweater number 18, the Sophie scarf and my Queen Elizabeth washcloths. Now I, um, you've seen, if you're watching, you see these in the little video clips that I've been popping up. So these are whips that I have going. I don't want to frog any of these. I want to keep them going. I just don't want them in the front of my mind right now. Sophie scarf, sweater number 18, Queen Elizabeth washcloths, and a pair of vanilla socks. So I have in my Canva saved the photos of these whips and I go over here to uploads to find those photos or to upload new photos. So these are all of my whips. You can kind of see them over here, all the photos that I've taken. 
And I would like to start here and I'm gonna add the text in by just tapping on the box. I'm going to start here with sweater number 18, not 19, 18. And you can change the font here if you want or make it larger for the inserted font. Let's see, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. Oh no, I didn't wanna do that. Let's do, maybe I wanna make that underlined. Yeah, I'm gonna underline the input data, like the, the information I input. So sweater number 18 is the first that I am archiving on my document here. The archive date for this is April 18th. Wait, is it the 18th? No, 17th, excuse me. April 17th, 2024. And I'm going to choose to underline that. That's just a stylistic choice. You can do whatever you want. April 17th, 2024. Okay, now I wanna add some photos of my project. Now what's great about these photo frames, you see the little like cloud and the grass and all of that. That means that you can drag and drop a photo over the top of that frame and it'll pop it in there for you. So I'm going to head down to where I have this project. Here's one right here, pop it in and it automatically pops in there, okay? And then I'm gonna do this one and one little detail shot just like that. And then you can double click on those photos and kind of move them up and down in the frame. If you want to, I'm gonna adjust this one just a little bit. And there we go. Sweater number 18 has photos. I have an archival date there. The yarn that I am using for this, oh, you know what? Let me grab, hold on. So this is uh, Lucky Tweed. This is by Kelborn Woolens. So I'm gonna type that in. So I have Kelborn Woolens. Did I spell Kelborn correctly? Yep, Kelborn Woolens Lucky Tweed. Let's put a space here. Kelborn Woolens Lucky Tweed, and I am using the colorway Ocean. Okay. Now, um, I have enough for this project that I, I have enough yarn for this project. You could, if you want to, you can include a link here to where you purchase the yarn. If you feel like you might need to purchase more in the future, um, you can put on here how many skeins of this that you have. So that way at the time of archiving, cause you're probably not going to store all of the yarn that goes with that project. Right. But at the time of archiving, you can take note of, well, okay, I have this many skeins currently in my stash, not including the, the yarn that's in this bag over here being archived. So that way down the road, if you are planning on starting something new, you can check with your whip archive and see, okay, can I use that yarn that I see over there in my stash or is it in one of the archived projects? And so that reminds me, I need to figure out how many of these exactly I have. And I have five of these. I have three of them in my stash, which means that two of them are in the archive. So I'm going to put in parentheses here. Um, three skeins in stash. Okay, and I am going to, I'm gonna make that three skeins in stash. I'm gonna make that bold, I need to make this bigger. I'm gonna make that bold. There we go, put a little space in between. You can, you, you whatever, you can do what you want here. Be careful though, because if you format things, if you add spaces, you'll notice that this section changed. You don't wanna push things off to the next page and the formatting gets all wonky. So I think I'm gonna pull this up a little bit here. No, it's fine, just leave it, okay, stop. All right, needles. Now this is where I am going to have to go into the actual project and see what kinds of, what size of needles I am using for this. Size nine circulars. And I don't have any other needle in that bag with that. And I know that there's a smaller needle required. So that means I need to go into my um, knit companion, which I am going to do here. This is requiring a size eight and a size six needle. I am using a size nine needle. And I'm assuming if I'm using a size nine needle that I am using a size seven smaller needle. So I'm going to put in here a size seven. I did not take note of that and that's my bad. Um, size nine, size seven circulars. Always take note of if you change the um, needles that you're using in the pattern for something different, take note of that on your pattern. You can do that on Knit Companion and you can obviously do that on pen and paper. Um, I didn't do that here, so I'm making an assumption. 
I'm pretty sure I'm right because I usually don't deviate that much from, I don't change the difference between the larger needle size and the smaller needle size. I'll ch I can change them to meet gauge, but then I change them concurrently or uh, I, I change them in the same increment. I don't know if that makes sense. Okay, so my needles are a size nine and a size seven circulars. Okay, so we have that. Now project rating. The reason I included a project rating here is because it has you evaluate where this project sits with you currently. Not because it should encourage you to frog it, because I think you should really only be frogging the things that immediately need to be frogged. If you feel like you have to even consider it, archive it. Come back to it later, just archive it. Don't let that weigh on you right now. If you've made it to the point where you have 10 or fewer whips, 10 is a lot, but if you've made it to the point where you have that many or fewer, you may most likely be able to afford spatially to store it away. Um, so this is, all this is, is for you to have, it's just to take note of how you feel about this project right now, so that when you come back to this later, you can assess, are you more or less excited than you were at the time of archiving this? If you are more excited or more in the green in the future than the time that you archive the project, then finish it. That's a really good indicator that you need to finish it. However, if you feel less enthusiastic about it than the time that you archived it, now's the time to consider just frogging it because you're only growing less excited about it as time goes by, which is a fantastic kind of natural way of determining whether something is worth your time. Okay, so I have that here. Now, if we're doing this digitally, you can't really like select one of these very easily. So what I do um, on a document like this on Canva is I'll come over here to the elements section, little circle, and I'll just grab, like you can get all kinds of cute little things. A circle, this circle, look at that, see that circle? And I'm gonna put it around the one that I think fits. I'm gonna change the color up here. I'm gonna make it red and I'm gonna put it around that guy because that's about where I'm feeling right now with my sweater number 18. It's right there, look at that. Okay, very cute. So we are so far down to project. Now we're ready, now we're ready to talk about where the project is being stored and that's something I wanna to talk to you about in a minute. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna talk about where the project is being stored after we input the remaining uh, projects that I have going into my whip archive because I have one place where all of these whips are going to be stored and I want to share that with you. Um, you know what? So what I'll do here, I'll just type it in and then I'll show it to you in a minute. Are you with me? Okay. Everything is being stored. I'm going to make, I'm a centrally, okay, in my whip basket. Now that sounds very generic to you, but to me, Let's just, I'll just show you now, but to me, I know exactly what that is. This is my whip basket. See this adorable picnic type basket? Yeah, this is from my mom. Um, I stink and love this basket. I don't really know what to do with this basket other than to use it to store things nicely in my office, but this is my whip basket. This is where whips tend to go to die typically, but I want it to be more functional and purposeful and intentional. And this is where I will be storing all of these archived whips. And I keep it in a location in my office. Like here's a photo of where I store this basket. When you walk into my office and look up to the corner, it is the first thing you see. It has its very own shelf. That is the whip basket shelf. So as out of mind and out of, or out of sight and out of mind that this will be, it's never completely lost to me. I will know what's in there but it's the whip basket, which I may be referring to as my archive basket from now on. And it's always up there. I'm looking at the shelf right now, and that's where I would go to pull it down and look through and see what I have archived. That's where they're going to go. So I will be putting whip basket. I'm actually gonna change, we're gonna change it now. Archive basket, and there we go. So the first project has been archived. You know what? Let's make a big celebration about it. Here it goes. Sweater number 18, open up the archive basket in it goes here look Ooh, see there it is sweater number 18 is archived i feel like there should be a sound that goes along with that there first project done let's go ahead and fly through these next ones shall we
Okay, the one thing that I forgot to mention the first time that I was going through this is that you want to include where your pattern is located. So up here where I say sweater number 18, because it says here pattern name and location, and you can add links here. Um, I'm not going to add any links to this, but I am going to mention that it is saved in Knit Companion. And then I know that I have it, I'm using it actively in Knit Companion. If you are saving it in a physical copy, you're going to wanna to make sure that it is in there with your project. And you can even put in there with project or in archive bag or something like that. So you wanna make sure you take note of where the actual pattern can be found. So in the case of sweater number 18 and all, all of the ones that I'm doing here, they are saved in Knit Companion. My status is saved in Knit Companion and all of that. So when I go into my archive document, I put that these things are saved in Knit Companion. That way I know it's someplace. Okay, something else that I have on here when it comes to where you're storing this, I do put a note here that says if you have this project stored in a particular project bag, meaning that you've chosen to store the project in its project bag, make sure you describe the bag. For example, if I'm storing this project in my whip basket or my archive basket, I want to mention that the project bag I'm storing this in is a fringe supply company caramel project bag. But that way I know what the project bag looks like. So I'm not sifting around. I know which one to grab when I need to access that archived whip. Okay, I have finished inputting all of the information for each of my whips. So what you can see here is that I have one, two, three, four whips being archived. Now on this document here for me, that means that I can go ahead and just delete. Let's see, I'm going to delete these extra pages because I don't need them right now. And if I wanted to make any changes or duplicate any pages, I still could. So if I wanted to make or add another whip to my archive, I could simply duplicate one of these pages and then replace the information that I have here with the updated information. But I'm gonna go ahead and delete that because I don't need it. Now that I've completed all of this, I have my project archive. It shows all of the works in progress that I have in my archive that have been stored away. And all of those projects are stored, oh, in my archive basket, they're they're in there. You see, they're all in there now, which, which is great. And I'm gonna close that up in just a moment. But now that I've done this, I wanna go ahead and save this. So I'm gonna go up here to share, and you'll be able to do this too if you access the link that I provide you and you have a Canva account. If you don't have a Canva account, you can have fun creating a document very similar to this using some other kind of a Word document platform and you can have a lot of fun with that. But if you use Canva, this will be a lot of fun for you as well, just getting used to using Canva and using this document. So I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna download this and I'm going to save it as a PDF um, standard. I don't need to be printing this in some kind of fancy way. I just wanna save this as a PDF that I can then save on my desktop. So I'm gonna click PDF standard. I will flatten the PDF, meaning that everything gets compressed onto one plane. And then I will download it. And it's gonna be called Six Project Archive. I should have actually changed that for my own benefit. I call it a six project archive for your benefit as well, but you can change the name of this however you want it to be. And so I think I'm actually going to do that. I think I'm going to change this to project. I'm just going to say whip archive. I'm going to do this one more time. We're going to download this again, flatten it, all of that. No, no, no. I don't want to print. Sorry. I don't want to. Okay. I want to download, download whip archive. I like that better. Okay, so this is my whip archive. Okay, so this is just a sample of my desktop. Um, it's just an empty 
portion of my desktop with my two cute little boys. I'm going to create a folder here, just a new folder. I'm going to bring it right over. Oh, I can't move it. Okay. Well, that's fine. Um, and I'm going to name this whip, capitalize whip, whippo <laughs> archive, whip archive. And I am going to take this whip archive document that I have right here and pop it into that folder. You could also just, so here it is, you could also just leave the document right on your desktop and you don't even need to have a separate folder. You can just kind of always have it there as your current WIP archive. And then every time you adjust that or add to it, you just replace that document. You can do that as well too. But I kind of like to have things in folders, even if it's a single document. It's just the way that I am. What can I say? So that's my WIP archive. I know that if I need to find out what it is I have stored away, I open it up and my screen, let's see, there it is. There's my whip archive. And if I wanted to, I could print it out. I could even clip it up on a pegboard somewhere just to remind me um, that this is what I have going on. If you don't want it to be completely out of sight, out of mind, you have to kind of go with your own preferences there. Um, but for me, having it in a folder neatly on my desktop, I like that. So there it is. And I also like that you can't adjust this. In order to adjust this, you have to get onto the document, move some things around. It's all just right there, standard, set in stone. This is what you have going on, which I love that. So there's my whip archive. Loving that. Well, there you have it, guys. My idea for archiving my whips, my whip archive basket, it is all in here everything labeled in a nondescript little bag so that my project bags are available to me. I'm closing it up and I am going to put this back up on my whip archive shelf. And that's where they are. That's where all of my sleeping whips are being held out of sight for the most part out of mind for now, but not deleted from existence and not impossible to just access at a moment's notice. If somebody were to ask me, what do you have in your whip archive? I could just open up a document and say, well, in fact, this is what I have. And these are all of the details in here. Have a look at a photo of what I have in my whip archive. So that's what I have. I have provided you with a link to a template, the exact template that you see me use here down below in the description box. And if you head over to Patreon, you can join the Wool Needles Hands Patreon over there. It's a fantastic way to support the work that goes in to building the Wool Needles Hands channel. As a patron, you have access to all the Millinote boards that I create for each of my midweek ramble videos, which means it provides you with a walkthrough of the content I provide on each of these videos with links and notes and all of that. And this particular Millinote for this video will provide you with a walkthrough on how to do everything that I just did in today's video with a little bit of additional insight on this process or concept of whip archiving. So definitely head over to Patreon, see if that's for you. And if you decide to join, you can check out the Milla note for today's midweek ramble. As always, thank you so much for your support. Well, that is it for me today, guys. I have archived my whips. I'm feeling really good about offloading that and putting it away someplace where I know it is safe and where I know I can access it for later. If this is helpful to you, if you took any value from today's video or enjoyed yourself at any point, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Definitely subscribe and click that bell icon so you can be notified anytime I upload new content here on the channel, which is every Wednesday and every Sunday. And if you have any advice for folks wanting to do a whip archive or some way of managing your whips, drop it down below in the comments. We would love to hear from you until I see you guys again on the next video coming to the channel. Happy knitting, happy making, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Take care, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye.